What's going on everyone? I'm working on the foundation of some pretty cool stuff right now and I figured what better way to do it than with a new video format. In this one I'll show you some new stuff that I've got going on in the animal room, plans for the future, and I'll briefly touch on some bad news. As much as I love trying to DIY everything in my collection, and trust me, I mean it when I say it, I really do try to DIY as much stuff as I possibly can. It adds a different layer of things to my hobbies, and it just, it helps me to enjoy them more to some capacity, but there really does come a time when you just have to use things that are prefabricated. Do you remember the wire shelf that I used to use for storage in my old animal room? Well, I finally managed to get it to my new place where it will soon be used for similar purposes as before. If you're not adept at DIY and you don't need to hold things that are extremely heavy, then I definitely recommend this type of shelf. Since they're modular, you can always alter them down the road when your vision changes, which is huge. Also, they're pretty cheap, come in various colors, and in my opinion, they don't look half bad. You'll notice that the largest gap is actually the space underneath of the bottom shelf. I did this purposefully so that we would be able to place a 40 gallon stock pond underneath of the rack. Then on the next shelf up, we'll have a few Tupperware containers for propagating terrarium and vivarium plants. I've been using these for years and they're a great cheap solution. No worries, I'll show you more about these later on in the video. If you follow me on Instagram, then you're already somewhat familiar with this shelf. Not to go off on that tangent, but if you don't follow me on Instagram, you really should take a moment to do so. I post pictures of my animals, terrariums, project sneak peeks, general updates, and much more. So if you like my content here on YouTube, I guarantee that you'll like what I'm posting daily on Instagram as well. Anyways, I've been working on a pond for the goldfish. If you remember, I used to have 9 of them, but unfortunately, I lost 5 because of a rapid drop in temperature. Allow me to explain. My fiancé and I purchased a home back in July, for those of you who don't know. The pond was supposed to be a top priority, but as life would have it, things just kept getting in the way. I had to redo the entire kitchen, replace a lot of drywall that was infested with mold, along with general home improvements. So before I knew it, it was about halfway through September. I thought to myself, dude, you better get a move on with this pond. My goal was at least to get the goldfish outside before it got too cold so that way they could overwinter. It was still pretty warm so I took them outside and kept them in a stock pond. I thought that they would have more than enough time to gradually acclimate to the temperature fluctuations and they were doing really well for a few weeks even when it was getting down to the mid 40s at night. However one day it got down below the 30s and I think the shift in temperature just wasn't gradual enough for the fish. I came home to a bunch of fish that were either floating or lifeless at the bottom of the stock pond. Luckily I kept their old tank up and running because I was caught up in other things. So thinking fast I netted all of the fish including the floaters and put them in a bag full of water. Then I placed the bag in their aquarium so that they could temperature acclimate. I'm not going to lie, this move really took a toll on me. If you've been following me then you know that I lost other fish in the process and this was the icing on the cake. Like I told my fiance, I keep animals because they make me happy. I don't know why they make me happy, nor do I question it, but they definitely do. However, when they go, it's seriously the worst thing ever, and if I'm going to be real with you guys, many tears were shed for these fish. I was really sad because not only did I raise these fish up, they were my pets. You know, I interacted with them, they knew who I was, even if they were just trying to get me to feed them a lot of the time, they still knew who I was and were extremely personable, and it's largely my fault that they passed. On a positive note, two of the floaters and the ones that were lifeless on the bottom made it. Needless to say, I'm not taking any more chances this season, so we'll keep the goldfish in the stock pond until spring of next year. I will say that I'm likely not going to do much with the pond until then, and may even wait until spring to release the video on the build. That would probably be the best thing to do, it would give us something to look forward to, and at this point I'm really in no rush to finish. In the meantime, we'll put this shelf where their tank used to be, and in about 5-6 to six months they will be moved outside and stay there. That means we will have an empty stock pond ready for a new project. I'm not quite sure what we'll do with it from that point, but I do have some plans to make it pretty cool even while the goldfish are living in it. If you have any long term ideas on what we should stock and or do with this, definitely let me know. I'm 100% open to suggestions with this one. Enough about that though, let's move on to the rest of the rack. 
As I said, the shelf just above the goldfish here is for propagating terrarium and vivarium plants. That said, one shelf just isn't going to be enough, so we'll do the same thing on the next shelf up. For the time being, I just have a few containers so that I can calculate how much space is needed. No worries, I'll get more later on. I also wanted to incorporate some aquariums on the next shelf up. Originally my thoughts were to use these strictly as growout tanks, but then I changed my mind. I will still partially use these as growout tanks, but let's be real, I want to make them look nice as well. So at some point in the near future, I will intently scape these aquariums. I'm also working on building up a collection of various microfauna, primarily isopods. As such, the next shelf up is going to be for those. While on the topic of isopods, if anyone can hook me up with some rubber ducky isopods, let me know down in the comments. I've been trying to get them for a while now, but they're really hard to come by. Now let's go back to what I mentioned earlier in the video about the containers for my plants. What these are is a Tupperware container with a built-in foam gasket. They're meant for keeping the elements out, but in my case, I want to keep the elements in. What I mean is that these containers basically act like a big terrarium. Since they have a foam gasket, water can't escape, and instead it creates a humid environment that for the most part sustains itself. Occasionally, I do water the plants, but it might be every three months or so. There are various brands that make containers like this, but what if there was a viable DIY alternative? Well, believe it or not, there is. To start, I like to use these adhesive foam strips, which are intended for use around doors and windows. I also like to use containers with clamp locking lids like this. Otherwise, our DIY foam gasket just isn't going to work right. With our material selected, we'll simply line the inside of the lid with a foam strip, and that's about it. The roll of foam only costs $4 for 60 feet, so it's going to last you quite a while, and you can use it on whatever containers you prefer. So if you're looking to get a lot of containers like this, and are on a strict budget, the DIY alternative is actually the more cost effective option. Now the whole reason that I'm making these containers is that I wanted new setups for my mosses. My current containers are working fine, but these will do even better. Using the same methods I've shown in the past, I'll set up the moss bins. For more details on that, I'll link an in-depth video above. The process is quite simple though. I start with a layer of gravel, then I add a sheet of fiberglass window screen mesh, then a layer of carbon or charcoal, and finally a layer of substrate. Then of course we'll top everything off with lush pastures of green moss. Most of these mosses grew out of control and are largely tangled together. Long term I'd like to separate the moss by species, but in the meantime this will work just fine. Before closing it up I'll add a little bit of dechlorinated water and finally some springtails. Now we've got to get everything lit up. Generally speaking, I don't go overboard with lighting and I frequently use LED shop lights. As such, this shelf won't be an exception. We'll start out with the bottom shelf using an old T5 fixture that has an LED strip light instead of a fluorescent bulb. For the next shelves up, I got a few lights from Walmart for $16 a piece. I bought one of these a while ago and I was really surprised by how good they are for the price. Anyways, one of the things that I like about these shelves is how easy it is to install lights. All that I do is get some zip ties and tie up the lights through the holes meant for hardware. This is really easy to do and it makes it pretty simple to adjust the lights down the road if need be. I also added one of these lights on top of my 180 gallon plywood vivarium. The shop light that I had was working fine, but I think I needed something just a tad brighter and believe it or not, I spent about half the price on the new one. Plus the new one's a double light fixture so we'll get better coverage as well. Honestly, I think these lights are a gem for the price, like what more could you ask for in a $16 light? They're bright, they're LED, and they're inexpensive, need I say more? Lastly, we got some goodies from our friends down at H2O Plants. If you go check out the video description, I have a coupon code that will get you 10% off your first purchase. Anyways, they sent me a ton of awesome plants that will work great for some upcoming projects that I have lined up. For example, most of these large plants were grown out of the water, so if I were to use them in an aquarium, they would have to convert. Although I have tanks big enough to house them, I think that I may grow them out of the water instead. More on that in a future video though. Well, 
We also got some cool terrarium plants that are all suitable for a riparian type setting. Keep that in mind because we may do some pretty cool stuff with the stock pond later on. Lastly, we got a few tissue cultured terrarium plants. One of which were some Neoregelia bromeliads that went right into the 180. All of the other plants I prepped and put in one of my plant bins for future projects. That said, I don't think they'll be staying in there for very long. And that's gonna do it for this one. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this style of video. I guess it's kinda like a commentary vlog, if that's even a thing. I wanted to make a video that was like my other vlogs, but slightly more structured. Anyways, as you can see, I've got a ton of stuff in the works and I want you to be a part of it. So if you're not yet subscribed and you want to see the type of projects that I come up with, then be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my uploads. Also, if you liked the video and haven't done so already, be sure to give me a like down below. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Peace.